Hello and welcome to the My English Matters podcast. I'm Aisha, and in today's episode, we're tackling a hot topic that's changing the way people approach their writing, chat GPT. Whether you're a student, a professional, or someone looking to improve their English, chat GPT can be a really helpful tool. But as with any tool, there are do's and don'ts for using it, especially when it comes to writing. We'll go over five key points on how you can make the most of ChatGPT for your writing while avoiding common pitfalls. And stick around because I'll also answer the question on many students' minds. Do universities allow the use of ChatGPT? So let's get started. Number one, do use ChatGPT to help you brainstorm. ChatGPT is great for sparking ideas. Whether you're stuck on how to begin an essay or email, need inspiration for social media posts, or are looking for ways to structure your writing, ChatGPT can provide suggestions and ideas that get the creative juices flowing. Use it to break through writer's block by typing a simple prompt like, give me ideas for dot dot dot, and let the ideas start rolling in. I'll let you in on a little secret. I use ChatGPT to help me come up with ideas for writing this episode. I could have done it without ChatGPT, of course, but it would have taken me much longer as I'd need to spend hours looking up different sources. ChatGPT helps me save time. It's like having someone to bounce ideas off. Number two, don't rely on ChatGPT to do all the writing for you. This is an important point. ChatGPT can generate text, but it's not meant to replace your voice. If you just copy and paste what it produces without making it your own, it won't reflect your unique style and could come across as generic. I can often tell when someone uses ChatGPT without any editing, especially if I know how they usually write. The generated text tends to sound robotic, like it lacks the personality of a real person. Also, ChatGPT isn't always accurate. I've used it to look up grammar rules and sometimes it gives the wrong examples. Fortunately, I knew the correct grammar rules beforehand. That's how I managed to spot these errors. But we don't always know everything, though, so it's important to cross-check with more reliable sources, especially when citing facts. Ultimately, you're responsible for the final product, so always add your personal touch and review for any errors or awkward phrasing. Number three, do use it as a grammar and spelling checker. ChatGPT can act like your instant personal editor. You can paste sections of your writing into ChatGPT and ask it to check for grammar or spelling mistakes. It's helpful for catching errors that you might overlook, especially when you've been staring at the same text for too long. But remember, like I mentioned earlier, ChatGPT isn't always accurate. Double check everything. It's still important to understand the corrections it suggests. Whether you like it or not, you still need to use your brain. Number four, don't forget to fact check the information it provides. While ChatGPT can generate a lot of useful content, it's not perfect when it comes to factual accuracy. Sometimes it may give outdated or incorrect information, especially if your topic requires current data or expert insights. So if you're writing a research paper, an essay or an article that needs reliable sources, always cross check the facts before including them in your work. Number five, do use it to improve your vocabulary and phrasing. If you're looking to expand your vocabulary or find more precise words to express your ideas, ChatGPT can help with that. You can use it to rephrase sentences to sound more formal or suggest synonyms for words you're overusing. This is a great way to enhance your writing skills and learn new ways to articulate your thoughts. So, now that we've covered the do's and don'ts, Let's get to the big question. Do universities allow the use of ChatGPT? So when ChatGPT was first launched, several universities in the UK, including Imperial College London and the University of Cambridge, issued warnings against using it to cheat. Some institutions have outright banned AI tools, especially in settings like exams and formal assessments where they believe it could undermine academic integrity. Many universities have updated their academic integrity policies to specifically address AI tools like ChatGPT. This includes clear guidelines on whether and how students can use such tools in their coursework. 
Some universities require students to declare the use of AI in their assignments, and failure to do so may be considered a violation of academic honesty rules. In Malaysia, the Ministry of Higher Education has not banned its use in universities, but students must follow guidelines issued by the Department of Higher Education. The Ministry recognises that while ChatGPT can be useful, it has its limitations and students need to understand when and how it should be used. For example, using ChatGPT to generate academic papers without further input is not acceptable. It's all about responsible use, making sure you're aware of the risks, such as inaccurate information, and following the rules set by your institution. So, to sum up, ChatGPT can be an amazing tool for improving your writing and generating ideas, but like anything, it's important to use it wisely. Follow these do's and don'ts and always be mindful of your institution's policies. And I didn't mention this before, but don't forget to be polite when using ChatGPT. You never know, you might want to stay on its good side. You know, just in case AI becomes our overlord in the future. So thanks for tuning in. If you found this episode helpful, make sure to subscribe and share it with a friend who might need these tips. If you want to learn even more with us, don't forget to subscribe to our mailing list at myenglishmatters.com. Talk to you again soon.